Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today's topic is about Twilight Princess and how it's been deceiving us for 17 years. Worse yet though is how it didn't need to do this and how the effects of that lie have rippled forward ever since the game's release in 2006. I wasn't expecting to find such a fumble here. I was actually trying to make a video that would pin down the placement of Breath of the Wild. Yet here we are, so take a seat and get comfortable. I'm Cornelius Belmont, and let's talk about how Nintendo lied about Twilight Princess. Thanks for watching the video. If you like my content, please like and subscribe to the channel. I recently started a Patreon. More on that at the end. A special thanks to these people for letting me use their assets. Spoilers ahead for the following games. Let's get into it. Let's start things off by asking a very simple question. Is the hero of Twilight right or left-handed? No need to write anything down, just keep your answer in mind. Well, the footage that I use on this channel depicts him as right-handed, and no doubt many of you are aware of how the game was altered before release, back in 2006 in order to accommodate that. I'll touch on those reasons a little later, but right now, I want to bring up a few very specific things about how handedness plays into the narrative of the series. Up to this point in time, our hero in all official games has been left-handed. This was a choice from the series' inception, with various rumors in play about it. The biggest of which being that Shigeru Miyamoto himself is left-handed. Well, he is actually ambidextrous and favors his left hand, but that is beside the point. In any case, throughout the games, Link has been depicted in official art as left-handed, with even the Link in Wind Waker, a replacement hero, carrying that trait. So when it comes to Twilight Princess, the expectation based on precedent would be that he was left-handed. For many players though, about 80% if we trust sales figures, they experienced a right-handed hero instead. The consequences of this are not immediately apparent. Does it really make a difference, you might ask? To you dear viewer, it makes a bigger one than you realize, and I'm going to run through it. For now, let's go into more detail about why the Hero of Twilight was altered. It was 2006. The GameCube was at the end of its life cycle, and the shiny new Nintendo Wii was becoming the new favorite in the console wars. This was because of the innovation of motion controls, which managed to pull a wider crowd into the gaming market. It proved to be so popular that rival companies copied and attempted to make their way into the market as well, with lesser degrees of success. All the same, Nintendo wanted to make sure their new Zelda game was pushing the agenda. And so the choice was made to put Twilight Princess on the Wii and include motion controls. This however presented a conflict with the identity of the series up to that point, and so a choice had to be made. With roughly 90% of the population being right-handed, and the motion controls being meant to mimic the actions of a more edgy hero, a decision was made to change the hero to be right-handed. You might think that the story ends there, a simple flip of the hero for the sake of advancing business sales, but there are consequences to this choice and just how Nintendo chose to do the Switch. You see, as always is the case, there is an easy way to do it, and then there is the right way to do it. Nintendo was lazy. This goes beyond the simple flipping of the world, which I'll get into in a moment. But consider this. Ideally, they should have made animations for Link using his right hand. Perhaps even a simple flipping of his model, but his model alone. That wouldn't solve all the problems though, as sometimes Link interacts with the environment and other people and in those animations they would need to be altered to reflect his new right-handedness. The simple act of making Link right-handed carries a lot of little things that would need to be altered. The reward for such effort would be something wonderful, a game with a choice of motion controls chosen by the player to reflect their own-handedness. 
Imagine a game with motion controls that is courteous enough to ask people which hand is their dominant to play with. Imagine a game where that hero that you're supposed to be putting yourself in the shoes of reflected your own preference for right or left handedness. If swinging the sword by flicking the Wii remote was meant to be immersive, it would have been elevated by letting people choose which hand to hold it with, wouldn't you think? I dare say that is how motion controls should have been used, instead of the train wreck we would have to suffer through for the next decade and beyond. Instead, Nintendo took the lazy way out. With the GameCube version basically done, they simply took it and flipped it so Link was now right-handed, and the consequences of that choice continue to linger. In the process of flipping the world, virtually everything that depended on those directions was thrown into chaos. You see, now Hyrule in the Wii version itself was physically mirrored right to left, meaning that what was once the southeast is now the southwest. The entire geography of the map falls into question. Not that the games have been particularly good about that constant to begin with, but that is beside the point. There are deeper consequences though. Consider the placement of the Triforce. With wisdom and courage flipped, depictions related to them are also impacted. If we look at the goddess statue presented in the game, one might question if their personalities are off because of the flipped image. Is Feror looking down on the land protectively, or is she looking to the sky for impending disaster? How about Nehru? Is she looking down making sure that the rules of the land are kept in place, or looking towards the sky trusting that her will will never be undone? Simply changing their position raises questions, but this statue is not the only thing. Indeed, the world becomes more inconsistent. Of course the Golden Goddesses are just one grand and pretentious example. There are far more mundane and prevalent situations to question. Is Princess Zelda left-handed now? She certainly seems to wield a sword using it. How about all the other characters we see? Why is suddenly the entire world populated with left-handed people? How about bigger things, like the rising and setting of the sun? All of these changes were made to accommodate Link now being right-handed. For the sake of motion controls, of course. Perhaps that wouldn't be too bad. Surely having the meta-knowledge of the situation could excuse it, right? Well, I disagree with such a position because as we know, Twilight Princess is a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. While investigating this, I found something of interest that may have been a mistake in the GameCube version that was fixed due to the flip. The Kokiri emblem, so prominent throughout the Forest Temple, is entirely backwards from its depiction in Ocarina of Time, but the flip in the Wii version corrects this. Other characters of note that are affected by a flip of handedness includes the Skull Kid, who was the same Skull Kid in Majora's Mask, I would remind you. Even Ganondorf now seems to be wielding the power of the Triforce with his left hand instead of his right, as we saw in Ocarina of Time. But one character in particular who had their handedness changed causes great conflict. That would be the Hero of Time himself, who continues to exist as the Hero's Shade. When you encounter him as a Stalpos, he teaches the young Hero of Twilight valuable moves to aid him in his quest. Before they begin their training, they cross their swords as a symbol of respect. And sure enough, in the Wii version, the Hero Shade is using his right hand. This is an example of what I talked about earlier, where had they done things correctly, they would have altered Link to be right or left-handed based on the choice of the player, and then altered the stance of the hero to accommodate the left-handed hero shade accordingly. That would take more work though, and flipping the world was a cheap and easy solution, so they could incorporate a new gameplay function with motion controls that nobody asked for. I do however want to bring up how Nintendo addressed the problem going forward. For you see, Nintendo wasn't giving up on motion controls, they were actually doubling down on them. With the creation of the Wii Motion Plus, new gyroscope technology to better track movements of the remote, and what is now used in the Joy-Cons of the Switch, they were able to make more complicated motion controls. This would of course feature in Skyward Sword to the discomfort of basically everyone who played it. 
So terrible of an experience it was, that not only did sales plummet for the title, but they had to figure out how to do away with them best they could when they remade the game. More importantly though, is that while they chose to again have Link wield the sword with his right hand, they introduced a few other things that were a bit more subtle. You see, Link is actually ambidextrous in Skyward Sword, but favors his right hand. Similar but reverse to Miyamoto as I mentioned earlier. You can see that how when he uses the bow, slingshot, and a few other items, he uses his left hand as his dominant one for them. By clumping him into this gray area, they were able to sidestep the issue of Link suddenly changing handedness again. Even still, with that, the whole thing raises the question if changing Link's handedness was truly needed at all, or if Nintendo catered to the majority while giving up on one of their most timeless aspects. I'm sure many left-handers out there were disappointed to see that one of their rare depictions in games had suddenly changed to be right-handed. Worse yet, for those left-handers who already struggle with motion controls, they now have to struggle with being forced to play right-handed as well. If you happen to be one of those left-handed players, I'd love to hear your opinions on this topic in the comments below. For now though, I ask you all, do you think that this is really that big of a deal? Does the handedness of the hero, villains, and characters really matter that much? Or do you think that Nintendo should have gone the extra mile and made a link that could be either right or left handed based on the preference of the player? Please leave your thoughts in the comments. If you would like to talk to me more directly about my videos, or suggest topics, come check out my Patreon. I love talking about this stuff and bouncing my thoughts off people, and on my Discord you're sure to get a few late night rambles out of me. I'll link to it below. For now, have a good day. This is Cornelius Belmont signing off.